Alright, what is up y'all? Today we're here with the Alolan Prebank League, the APL, Week 2 versus Mark. Now, Mark has a bit of an interesting team, um, and it went through a couple changes over the course of the season, so I did have to actually edit the little uh, document thing we have, but he has a team consisting of Marowak, Alola, Lycanroc, and I do believe he gets both Lycanrocs, so he can pick whichever one he wants to bring, so that's fun. Uh, Porygon 2, Raichu, Alola, Crobat, Scolipede, Miss Magius, Magius, whatever, uh, Meganium, Gothitel, and Granbull. So, looking at his team, Dark Spam just kind of just shits right on him, frankly. So that's the approach we went with. Um, me and Chris and Pat threw this team together, and uh, we thought it would work pretty well. So we have here our not necessarily suicide lead, but just just a great lead to bring versus him. Uh, like I said, Dark Spam ruins him. Uh, P2 doesn't want to get knocked off. Crobat can't kill us. Uh, Scolipede, fearing us to be Scarf, would probably have to protect the first turn. And then, uh, you know, we can get up rocks or something on that. Um, this may just will outspeed us, but it doesn't kill us with Dazzling Gleam because of our HP investment. And it might not have killed regularly, because I know Miss Magius is pretty strong, but it's not that strong, you know? Uh, Meganium, I'm not too worried about. It's fucking Meganium. Like, what are you gonna do? <laughs> Gothitelle is kind of tough, but I don't believe he's allowed to have Arena Trap, so that makes it a lot easier. And Gramble is just an annoying fairy type, but I think we have stuff to deal with that. <coughs> Cortana. But here we have Dark Types Matter. Pardon the racism. <laughs> but uh, with the Life Orb, we're guaranteed the Oko on just about everything. Uh. We don't actually have a rock move to hit Crobat, but we didn't really need it, seeing as how just knock off and beat up do very well. We thought beat up would be the way to go, just because he has so many things weak to dark that a Culberberry, which is the berry that uh, halves dark, super effective dark type damage, would probably be brought. So beat up would be cool with the Life Orb, of course, and Moxie, so that we can just click that. And if we lead off with this, then we get six hits, and that berry is not going to save him. It was pretty standard, uh, just enough speed to outspeed, uh, I believe Lycanroc, actually. Yeah, because we can't, he is a pretty fast team, so we can't outspeed that, but I think we have just enough speed for the the midnight form of Lycanroc. Then we have our old buddy Emo Sizzo, <laughs> Emo Sizzo, what the fuck? Emo Scizor here, who is Cartana with the Fighting MZ. And as you can see, we have some pretty fire, we have a pretty fire set on it this week. It is the Timid. 19 attack IV SD set. So basically, what you do is if you've seen the, I believe the week two, the the second time I played Tim, I did bring this set and it worked like a fucking charm. It is, you know, beast boost boosts your highest stat, and Cartana's attack stat is so fucking high that you have to literally run a negative nature and not even full IVs in order to boost your speed. But, with SD, you make up for that lack of, I think it hits 405 attack, if I'm not mistaken. That might be Dragonite, I don't know. It has a lot of attack. But, um, this does allow us to get the speed boost, since his team is so fast. But basically, if we get rocks up, then we set up one SD, and we kind of just sweep him. So this is going to be the late game, late game cleaner. Uh, it definitely has the potential, just with Night Slash, Sacred Sword, and Smart Strike, to just destroy him. So that'll be fun. Hopefully we can get the sweep going. I do love me some Cartana. This shit is amazing. Even Mons with very little special defense and a time 4 weakness can be quite potent in the draft league format if played correctly. Then we got Pirate Bay here, the Mega Blastoise. It's kind of a standard set with Mirror Coat, Scald, Toxic, Rapid Spin. Uh, I say standard and then I said Mirror Coat, but it's kind of to be expected. Blastoise is one bulky bitch, and we do like to run Mirror Coat and Counter pretty often, so I think they might be expecting it, but we'll see. Then we have here, going with the uh, the Dark Spam, we have not a phase, which is our Choice Banded Sneasel. This thing does a shitload of damage to his whole team. If he wants to try and switch out, we can pursue him, Icicle Crash, and Knock Off, respectively. Just, again, they just ruin his team. Like, Jesus Christ, looking at it now, that's everything. Fuck. He can switch in like like a Gramble and get the Intimidate, but we're gonna knock off his leftovers, and then we'll probably switch out to whatever. You know, everything else on our team deals with that. So, 
Then on the second turn then, even after the Intimidate, I'm pretty sure he's still too bit KO'd by Icicle Crash as long as we hit. So that's cool. Um, Sneasel doesn't have the highest base attack in the world, but it's so fast and its type and coverage moves are pretty damn good, so it gets the job done. There's our little baby Weavile, you know. And we have Flare Blood. Uh, Shoutouts to Magnitude for the nickname, which is a Choice Scarf Arcanine, and I know you're like Shaden, but why would you run Choice Scarf against Extreme Speed? Shut up and listen. <laughs> it uh, it outspeeds his entire team, and this was the one Pokemon on our team with the coverage moves to hit every single thing on his team. So with Adamant and 264 speed, we do outspeed his fastest thing, which I believe is the Crobat. And unless Scolipede, no, Scolipede actually can't even Oko us because of our defensive investment, and he would probably just click Earthquake, and he's going to be intimidated most likely. So that'll be fun on a bun. Um, I think it's pretty. Pretty self-explanatory. We just lock ourselves into probably crunch, honestly, and just click buttons. So that'll be that'll be some good shit. I've never actually ran a scarf Arcanine before until this league, so hopefully it didn't. Hopefully we don't look like idiots. And we have Bruce Bruce Sixth Jenner, another nickname of my creation, the Sylveon, who is just defensive enough to be able to deal with his team, but also has some special attack investment so that we can actually hit pretty hard ourselves too. Um, Hyper Voice, even after the nerf, just does a lot of damage to everything. And we have Shadow Ball, just for the stuff that resists it, like Scolipede, Crobat, stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, it's just it's just there to pass wishes, too. It helps to have, with a mod like Blastoise that's so bulky, the wish passing really helps just to give it a form of recovery, even though it doesn't have any recovery other than rest. So with that, I think we can just jump right into the battle. It's, uh... Spoiler alert, it's a bit of a quick one, so we'll do just that. So here we are with the battle. I do apologize, this was in the uh, the Gen 7 OU early stages, so they actually didn't have the sprite ready yet for the Lycanroc midday form. But you can see it, it's right there, that's what it is. This is just a... This is just a... It's a we'll pretend it's a missing no or something. But like I said, we do have pretty much a guaranteed lead with Crocodile, and as you can also see, three of his mons are weak to dark, Porygon 2 didn't want to take a knockoff, and Scolipede isn't exactly the bulkiest thing out there. So, we see no Crocodile switch ends, and I decide to just go right for the Crocodile. You know, it's just a thing to do. Lead off with it, and he leads off with Raichu. Now, fearing us to be Scarf, he switches out and goes into Scolipede, which we literally beat up. <laughs> Takes six hits and doesn't quite kill, but he will die to a life orb hit if he has it. Now, we predict him to go for the protect, and I just click Stealth Rock. Fuck it. You know, he's definitely... He switched out with Raichu, predicting us to be Scarf. So the only way he's going to outspeed us is if he protects. So I get rocks up, he gets a Toxic Spike. Doesn't really matter, I'm not switching out anyways. Go for the knockoff, kill the Scolipede, get our first Moxie boost of the game, and... It looks like he has to go into uh, Alolan Raichu, maybe, and hit us with Focus Blast. I think it's the only thing that can take us out. But he does go into the Porygon 2, Trace our Moxie, ooh. And I'm just going to knock that thing off. Even if he kills me with an Ice Beam, I just knocked off its Aviolite and hindered it pretty much completely. But by that damage, we do see that he is specially defensive and he doesn't have Ice Beam, apparently. So the try attack isn't going to kill us, and we're able to get yet another Moxie boost. Ah. We we'll take out the P2. We're at plus two attack, and he's running low on options. Again, I think the only thing that can kill us would be now Dazzling Gleam from Miss Megius definitely would kill us, and I think Focus Blast from Alolan Raichu would also kill us. But he predicts our switch and goes for the Willow Wisp. But we're not switching out. <laughs> See, he does have the Cobra Berry, but again, beat up just goes right through that shit. And it's looking like we got a bit of a Crocodile sweep going here. It's pretty fucking tight. So, and thanks to the burn nerf, we actually have another hit left in us. And Marowak comes out, and we beat that thing up too. <laughs> you know? At this point, Crocodile has just broken the biggest fucking hole in this guy's team. And he finally goes down to burn, but you know what? You did your job, Crocodile. You came in, you put the team on your little scaly back, 
and you just you he literally beat up everything on this dude's team. So he does have the Lycanroc Midday as well as the Alolan Raichu. We figured either way, I think just going hard into Arcanine was going to be the play, and we can lock ourselves into whatever move because he thought the Crocodile was going to be Scarf and we weren't, and that kind of bit him in the ass. So I think he won't expect us to be Scarf with this. We just click Crunch, we get a crit, didn't matter, Alolan Raichu is pretty frail, and Flare Bud picks up a kill, and I do decide, here comes out missing though, but I do decide to save the differential, because it does kind of matter in this league, there's a lot of, there's there's another person in the league that's very close to us, so we need to kind of separate ourselves from the herd here, but Lycanroc can easily take us out with a Stone Edge, and he does have the No Guard ability, so he can't even bank off a miss, so we switch out. Go hard to Blastoise. Oh well, he already said GG. He knows what's happening. We take the Stone Edge. Not very well, really. But we aren't Mega Evolved yet. So we do Mega Evolve. We eat up the next Stone Edge. Just barely. Thankfully he doesn't crit us. And we just go for the Scald to take out the Lycanroc. And that is the whole Week 2 battle. Well, I think it was Week 3 because we had a bye week technically. But I'm just going to call it Week 2. Fuck it. <laughs> and... Yeah, I can't, I I wasn't expecting it to go like that, really. I thought we'd have to work a little bit harder. Sneasel didn't hit the field, Cartana didn't hit the field, Sylveon didn't hit the field, but good game to Mark. It was definitely a lot of fun playing, and yeah, he did, he did leave pretty quick. <laughs> but yeah, that's going to be the week two battle. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and like, subscribe, do all that bullshit, and I will see you guys in a couple more days with our third upload of the week. I know, right? It's fucking crazy. <laughs> Bye forever.